and welcome to yet another episode of How I Spent the Apocalypse. I want to thank all of you that have been viewing our videos and helping us through this time to bring a little light to the world. Today I'm wearing my mask, even though I'm not going to wear it for all of this. But when I, if I was to go out, I would wear a mask because I want to tell you how important I think it is that we do protect ourselves and others to the best of our ability at the time. Are the masks the end all be all? No, but they're better than nothing. All right, to keep from spreading COVID-19. This mask was built by our lovely daughter-in-law, Paulette, and it's made with fabric scraps. Very beautiful job she did. Made with fabric straps. She's put a metal piece in here and it's got a piece of nylon that you can't see underneath it to make it a better filtration. It wraps all the way around, as you can see, for the best. But this is the part I like best. This is actually one of those hair kebab things that you put in your, you know, that women put in their hair. So I think that's pretty freaking awesome. So anyway, I wanted to thank Paulette for these. Okay, so you've heard me talk about thins before. I'm gonna show you thins and tell you what they are, and then I'm gonna show you how I use them. Okay, so this is a truckload of thins I picked up at my mill the other day. Love going to the mill, I can still go to the mill. There's only three employees. It's all outside, so it's fairly safe. They save these out for me because I'm one of the only people in the world that uses them. What a thin is, is it's a board that comes off the mill sometimes with live edges and sometimes completely planed out that's too thin and they're different if you can see if Lynn will take a picture of the end you can see they're different thicknesses and some of them are actually big on one end and small on the other but you can see they're different thicknesses so these are thins this entire truckload of thins which I will use for a long time I they it will last me a long time for many projects was only $60. I also use something called slabs all the time. The picnic table, if Lynn will scooch over and just look at the picnic table real quick. That picnic table is made with slabs. If you look at the end, you can see that what a slab is, is it's the outside of the log. And it's got the bark on it, and it's got one flat side. So what I usually do like to make a picnic table is I pick ones that are relatively the same, and then I plane the edges on my table saw, my poor, poor table saw. But there you go. So these are thins. And now I'm going to show you a couple of the projects that I've made. Actually, these are very apropos because I made these during the apocalypse, when the apocalypse started. One of the first things I did was I put gates on the property. Now you might say, that gate won't stop anybody. You can step right over the top of it. But what did we learn at Gettysburg? We learned that a three foot tall fence gets 500 people killed. So I locked it. This gate is made with fins. Now, fins are not heavy enough by themselves. So what I've done is I've double, double layered the main structural part. This is fins. If she can look at the top, you can see that's two boards. So I've double layered it to make the gate, which works really well. This chain, this fastener, all this stuff, stuff I had in one of my junk drawers. The hinges, the great big hinges, something from one of my drunk junk drawers, something somebody else threw away, believe it or not. I get stuff like that all the time. I put up that little piece of jagged ass fence, it was in the trash. Now see, I told you about peeling logs. I didn't peel these. I'm already sorry I didn't peel them. But they're sitting in two foot of concrete. So I'm not taking them up and redoing them. Okay, so yeah, these gates made since the apocalypse with thins. One of my favorite things to use is thins because they're easier to use than the slabs. Okay, so this is another thing I built since the apocalypse. Very appropriate for the apocalypse. Okay, because I built the gate, now UPS and, and FedEx can't get up into my yard and bring me packages. And because of the apocalypse, 
we're ordering almost everything that we're not creating on this place, we're ordering through the mail. I literally have not been to a store in five weeks. And I'm not looking forward to going, I gotta tell you. So we're ordering almost everything. So I built this. It's also made out of fins, except for the legs. The legs and the framework are made from old pressure treated, you can see inside, old pressure treated uh, two befores that I tore off of a water tower that I took down. So, and that's what the legs are too. So that the pressure treated wood is on the bottom. And also, you see that little wetness at the bottom? That's not actually wet, that's actually drain oil. I use a combination of drain oil and kerosene a lot as wood preservative. So it's drain oil, it's something you throw away anyway. Lynn will take a picture. The UPS guy was nice enough to leave us a little note that said, we're sorry we missed you. And as you can see, it works. It's got a package in there right now. And then the little sign says, uh, UPS, FedEx, USPS, please place packages in here. Thank you. So I'm not gonna pick that up right now because I don't do it unless I have gloves or I spray it because I'm that paranoid. One of the reasons I wanted to show you this today is because when I put this up, Lynn took a picture of it because she thought it was cute and pretty and stuff and put it on my Facebook page, right? You know, so, you know, because I thought what a good idea and everybody could do this or they could do something similar and it just helps out the FedEx and the UPS guy, it keeps us from having to come in contact with them, them from having to come in contact with us. The minute I put this, did she put this up? For every person that said, oh, what a good idea, and I love it, it's very pretty. There was another person who told us why this was never going to work and that nobody was going to use it and why they were just going to put our packages in the road. Naysayers. A whole list of them. Here's the thing about life. Every single time you want to do anything that nobody else is doing, you're gonna wind up with all these people that are gonna tell you a half dozen reasons why what you wanna do won't work. And this can especially be true when you're just trying to make do, when you're just trying to make things work. Yes, I've had a tremendous amount of failure in my life. Yes, a lot of times the projects I work on don't come out exactly the way I want them to if they come out at all. But I've had a hell of a lot of home runs too, especially when it comes to building with trash. I'm the queen of building with trash, right? And the thing that I've learned in life about naysayers is that they're always those people who never try anything. They don't have to worry about failure because they never show up and get in the ring. They never go out and try to do anything different. I wrote a lot of books. I never got rich and famous. I started a publishing house. It cost me money. I put in a B&B. We had an apocalypse. But every one of those things I had a good time doing. Every one of those things added something to my life, at least while I was doing it, and it brought some happiness to a few other people. I'm doing this now. That would be nice if it could monetize, but if it doesn't, I don't really give a shit. You wanna watch? I'm so happy that you're watching. If it could make any money, my God, that would be nice for a change. But if it doesn't, that's okay too. If I help one person figure out that they have a lot more than they thought they had, if I have help one person figure out how to do one thing they didn't know they could do, if I encourage one person to start thinking outside the box and seeing the stuff in their life for what it really is or what it could be, if I put a smile on one person's face, I'm freaking happy. That's fine. It doesn't have to do anything else. 
I appreciate everybody who's been watching. I especially appreciate all of you that have subscribed. If you have anything that you'd like to tell me or ask me about, or maybe you'd like to see me do a program on, do it, you know, you can comment. Write me a comment, question me. I'm trying to look at all of those every day. I don't always make it, because I'm pretty freaking busy here on my farm. But I will happily answer any of your questions. Unless they're stupid ass questions and you're a dumbass, <laughs> then I'm gonna tell you go fuck yourself, because that's who I am. <laughs> they have told me I'm not gonna get as many viewers if I keep cussing, but we all know, if you know me at all, you know I'm not gonna quit cussing. I'm just not. I'm sorry for that, kids. <laughs> Maybe you should ask mommy and daddy before you watch it. Any rate, I hope that you guys are finding ways to get through this time. They've reopened everything up. Everybody's running around like a moron. If you're trying not to get this as hard as I'm trying not to get this, I hope you succeed. And if you're running around like a moron, you're a dumbass! Quit being a dumbass! You guys have a good time. Get something done. That's all for now. Goodbye.